Hey everyone, Matt from Workshop Tinkers here. Uh, I was requested to do a quick and dirty explanation. Well, maybe not quick and dirty. As request to do an explanation. I'm going to do a quick and dirty explanation of how to set the uh, leveling screws on the 101 Hero. So uh, the leveling screws are really, really, really simple. They're literally a screw. There's nothing that it adjusts other than the screw itself. Uh, there is a uh, micro switch, an itty bitty little teen tiny micro switch in here that the during the homing process each arm will go up and bump against, hit down a tiny bit and real slow back up, hit to figure out where it is up and down. Uh, easiest way I've figured out how to deal with this is start a print. Uh, most of my prints start with a border and then I'll start with the print itself. Some of them, uh, like this one yesterday was the beginning of Yoda. I just stopped it because it, it wasn't looking pretty. There's something wrong with it. Uh, but this one has a two layer raft where it'll start with thick, heavy to adhere to the plate then a thinner, and then I'll actually start with the print itself. Uh, that's a raft. It's meant to come off later. I didn't let this one finish because reasons. I think I had issues, I was having issues with the filament feeding and I hadn't fixed it yet. But anyways, the easiest way I found to do this is start a print. So I'm going to start that uh, once I find the power cord. I'm going to try to let you see what I'm seeing. <laughs> so it is starting its print. It's going to go up. G28 is the homing uh, G code. So if you type that in, capital G28, enter into uh, front of face, repeater host, octo print, whatever your, if you have the developer version, have the USB, whatever your preferred USB. Um, it'll home. Unfortunately other printers for leveling either have probes which they'll sense where the beds are. They'll just, you can't see my finger anywhere. It'll come down, touch, and then know where it's at or touch and do G29 which is bed leveling. Marlin's built-in bed leveling which is touch, 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 touch. You don't know roughly levelness. This doesn't have any of that. It relies purely on knowing the distance traveled which is 220 millimeters. <sighs> okay, let me uh, plug in. It's heating up, obviously. And because this is the first time for the night, it has a bit to heat up. Okay, it's 191. It's almost there. Um, so anyways, I'll explain it while we're waiting. What I do is let it touch and check. If... Uh, Try to let it get as close to each pillar as it goes and figure out if it's touching the plate, screw it the screw in, which is a clockwise motion. If it's really thick and heavy, screw it, unscrew it a little bit. Um, what I found easiest is to reach in right here while it's down. So when adjusting, always unplug. The power, if you have a developer version, the USB, because it supplies some power to the board, and let it, um, and then make the adjustments. I usually do it while it's still as far down as possible, if at all possible. Which, how I do that is let it go up, then go back down, then unplug it. Probably not the best for it, but what you're going to do. So in this case... It is it's priming right now, which makes it difficult to see, and I didn't clean the board off. So here, it's about right. What you're looking for is a thin layer that isn't blobby, but it's pressed to the plate, but not yeah, but not blobby. And it does have a layer. Uh, I take, sorry, you're going freehand. I take the camera 
and let you zoom in, you can see it's too thick here, but over here, and especially in the back, it's pretty darn good. Sorry about the light. I don't have a good way of getting light in there. And honestly, the way for knowing how thick it is, is just experience. Um, thankfully, because of rafts, as I said, as uh, Yoda here uses, it's a really, really, really thick first layer, which is really forgiving. So actually, this is good enough for me with a raft. It will stick. It'll work. It, you might have to do cleanup, but so be it. It's a cheap printer. You're going to have to do cleanup. And uh, that's the quick and dirty. I'm not actually going to adjust anything because I don't really need to. Remember, uh, the actual bed leveling itself is that screw and the switch. And uh, it, it's literally just telling it, it's changing the height of the screw, if you can see here, to tell it its absolute position, or its relative position. Absolute relative. I don't remember. Tells it the distance, the height, it adjusts the height of the arm itself because the motor doesn't know any different. Uh, if you have inconsistencies in height while you're printing, meaning uh, one time it's too high, one time it's too low, and you haven't actually done anything, you're probably moving the printer itself. This is rather flimsy and it is susceptible to movement. Uh, other than that, that's pretty much it. This is pretty simple. There's no bed leveling or anything. If you're doing your own S STLs um, and slicing them and you can't get it to stick normally like, uh, like this one is, this is a pretty decent, so uh, a couple of things to look for. If you get this shiny over here, can you see that? Kind of. Yeah, okay. So shiny over here where it's flat and even. It's pretty good. You get over here where you have gaps. It's kind of rough. You can see where the filament went down. That's too high. Uh, another, I haven't seen this printer do it yet, but another uh, show of it being, yeah. Let's see, this one was too close pretty much everywhere because you can see the second, third layers here. See the cross? You have both directions. I hope you can see that. I'm trying to show it to you. But this printer doesn't have the problem of my other printer where it actually... I'm trying to see if I have a part in reach where it dragged the uh, print head through the already laid down filament. Okay, here it is. So these these pox here are from the, the print head dragging. This one might not actually ever have that issue because of how small the print head is. It's just basically a hole with the tiniest bit of metal. Uh, this is a E3D hot end, so it has quite a bit wider hot end tip with a tiny little hole in it. So it actually will rub and drag a bit more. That's too low. As I said, I haven't seen that with this printer yet. We'll see. I haven't got, because of how long it takes to print, I haven't printed all that much on it. Only half dozen prints or so. Uh, so I'm actually going to let this run and finish up, and I'll show you when it's done. Kind of glad I... Uh, Waited to show this. I want to show this is support material here to support the glasses. You just trim it off uh, in my razor blade. And uh, here's how I like to get prints off of glass. So holding it, you just get underneath. So everything that can be removed here is your raft. And then the support prints, or the support material here, which actually should just mostly break away. Right like that. Get a pair of uh, snips. I'm trying to do this in view of the camera.
turn the zits off of Yoda's face. <laughs> and then uh, the whole... Oh. oh, okay, so I have a layer defect there. So the entire bottom wants to come off. It's a bit too much. I'm not supposed to see the uh, pattern. So you can see uh, I had a defect at just above the bottom layer, which is fine. It'll still sit on desk pretty well, which is what I do for most of these. Doo -doo -doo. And that is about all the time and effort I will put into this particular print. It's not exactly pretty to begin with. So, you can print fun stuff. It's just, it's not going to be the prettiest. But, you can tell it's Yoda. His head turned out well. The glass is not so much. But, either way, that is the only problem. I don't know what happened. Maybe the whole thing shifted. Um... As I've said before, this thing's not the sturdiest in the world. Uh, I'm working on it. I'm working on it. I'm having troubles around the top edge. Trying to get something that clamps on and also clamps on top of there without interfering with stuff. So it, it's time consuming. But there we have it. Actually, hold on. One more piece of support material. It's not supposed to be there. Eh, close enough. Right? No. Oh, gotta get it. Gotta get it good. There we go. Okay. That's good enough. Right? Yeah. Good enough. And it actually appears... There's a, there's a layer defect there. There's a layer defect there. 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 It's very regular, the layer defects. I'm wondering if... I need to look at the gears. Actually, what I need to do is reslice one a couple myself and keep printing. The problem is, is when I do these videos at this bench, this isn't its permanent home. It's either upstairs, so I can get at it with the calipers, so I can do measurements and do modeling, or it's sitting on the 3D printing bench, which is not over here, but I left it over here today. Oh, the glasses just broke. Nice. Well, anyways, thanks everyone for watching. Uh, please let me know if you want me to make more of these. I've gotten, all it takes is one request and I'll probably do a video. Thanks everyone. Uh, and sorry Cody, I think I just realized from watching some of your videos that I'm stealing Cody's Labs intros and extras without even realizing it. Anyways, uh, see you next video. Bye.